Caleb Williams out of USC is projected to be the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. And today on the Commander's Report, I'm going to be going in full detail in my scouting report of the young man from USC. But before I break it all down for you guys, the pros, the cons, my, my pro comp form, all that great stuff, get down there in the comments section right now and kick off today's show by answering today's question. Is Caleb Williams worth the hype? Type W if you think he's worth it, or type O if you think he's overrated. So now let's start with the stuff that, in my opinion, makes Caleb Williams a really special player that you just don't see every day in terms of being an NFL draft evaluator. So let's start with the arm talent, because this is the stuff that everybody knows, all right? Caleb Williams' arm, not only can he throw it 70 yards in the air, but he can throw it 70 yards in the air from any platform and from any angle of his arm, which is something you just don't see very often. There might be 10 people on the planet that can throw the football like Caleb Williams can. Uh, so that's definitely something that's extremely valuable, especially when you look at some of the top quarterbacks in the league like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, Aaron Rodgers and the like, arm talent is super, super important. Number two, the playmaking instinct. So he combines that arm talent with playmaking instincts that are truly special when he's outside of the pocket, all right? When things break down, this guy has an ability to see the field and decipher open windows like nobody I have ever seen on a college film. It is absolutely unbelievable the plays that this guy is able to make. And this guy knows his limitations too, man. He knows what kind of arm talent he has. And he knows exactly what he can get away with. When you watch the highlight tape of Caleb Williams, man, it is probably the most impressive that you will see out of any quarterback ever coming out in the draft because there's so many eye-popping special throws outside of the pocket. And that's definitely something that makes Patrick Mahomes special. That's something that made Aaron Rodgers special for, for so many years. Brett Favre special. It makes Josh Allen special now. I mean, that's a, just th this combination of arm talent and playmaking instincts uh, has all the makings of a potential superstar in the National Football League. But it's not just the stuff outside of the pocket. It's not just recess football with uh, Mr. Caleb Williams. Because really, that playmaking instincts and the arm talent and all these different things, it doesn't really matter if you can't feel pressure and you can't move around in the pocket and escape the pocket. In terms of pocket presence, the ability to feel pressure, move in the pocket, get outside the pocket when you need to, there's no other college quarterback I've seen better pocket presence from than Caleb Williams. I mean, it's absolutely uncanny the way that this guy can see rushers from going behind him, knowing exactly where to step up in the pocket, knowing exactly when and where to leave the pocket. It's absolutely unbelievable that this comes so naturally to this kid. And that's something that makes Patrick Mahomes special. It makes Kyler Murray special when he came out from Oklahoma. This is something that this kid has. And with the playmaking instincts and arm talent, that creates one of the best playmakers I have ever seen on a college film. Another thing. And it's not just the outside-the-pocket playmaking that he's known for, guys. The pocket footwork. When, when he's working within structure, he plays with great base. He sticks in the pocket. He doesn't heel click, right? He doesn't bring the feet together. He keeps a solid base. He does a great job moving from, from that position in the pocket. And that's something you just don't see very often from college quarterbacks, especially from quarterbacks that like to escape the pocket. So this guy's got super clean pocket footwork. He's shown time and time again he can play within structure, and then he's got that special playmaking ability to pair with that. And then the final thing, and the thing that really brings it all together, and this is the thing that I think many NFL franchises are going to fall in love with, it's the work ethic, man. This guy has been known for his work ethic, even going back to high school, how much this guy would obsess over the, uh, over the game of football. Uh, this guy's work ethic, everybody from high school to college, both places at Oklahoma at USC, absolutely rave about the way this kid works. And this guy is going to be able to do whatever he needs to do uh, in order to become the best quarterback that he can be. And you can definitely tell that that work has paid off for him uh, when, you, when you study his film. So predict it for me down there in the comments section. Will Caleb Williams win an NFL MVP in his career? Give me a yes or give me a no. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show, so YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by giving me a yes or no down there in the comment section. So now let's go over the other positive traits because, I mean, it's not just those five things. Those are the five things that really make Caleb Williams special and different from other uh, college quarterbacks that come into the league. 
But there's other things that are definitely pros to his game. So let's go over those real quickly here. He played under adversity there at USC. The offensive line was straight hot garbage. The, uh, the wide receivers and the weapons were not very good either. All right, his number one receiver, Mario Williams, he went to Tulane. All right, he transferred, he transferred to Tulane. All right, so that's the kind of talent that he was working with. And that was his number one receiver. Okay, so he played under serious adversity there at USC, and he was still one of the more explosive and dynamic playmakers in college football last year with a terrible defense, a terrible offensive line, and pretty much no weapons, <laughs> which is just unbelievable. Then you got the accuracy. Very accurate quarterback. I'm not going to say the most accurate I've ever seen, but definitely very much on the high end there in accuracy. Then you got the rushing ability. I'm not going to say he's Justin Fields in the rushing department. He's not going to take a 70-yard rush to the house. But man, this guy's a dangerous rusher that understands rushing lanes. And you do not, do not leave this guy alone in terms of man coverage. And then the mental processing, this is something that he gets bashed on, but it's actually a strength of his guys. He can, he, I've seen multiple times on his film going from one to two to three to four all across a formation. You just don't see that very often from college quarterbacks. Now, Caleb would opt to go outside of the pocket more often, but you know that the mental processing power is there because I've seen it a number of times on his film. The only question is, can his uh, offensive coordinator and play caller in the National Football League corral that ability and really bring him into his own like Andy Reid did with Patrick Mahomes? Now, coming up, the cons with, with Caleb Williams. All right, so I've gone over the things that really make him special, some of the other positive traits, but no prospects perfect, guys. All right, so I'm going to be breaking down the cons with Caleb Williams' game here in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. If you want to make this your Super Bowl viewing experience even more interesting for yourselves, you can get started with today's sponsor, Prize Picks, which is a skill based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. And if you're wondering how that works, here's how you play it super easy. Pick two to six players, and if they'll go for more or less than their prize picks projection. You can even win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So let's take a look at my entry here for Super Bowl 58 between the Niners and Chiefs. I'm going to take the more on Christian McCaffrey rush yards, and I like both tight ends in this game to get more uh, than their re projected receiving yards totals there. I like Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. So I'm going to take the more. I'm an optimist, guys. Uh, I, I just can't help it. But if you guys want to get your picks in here, go ahead. You can do that right now by checking it out at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. With prize picks, it takes less than 60 seconds to make your picks. So get started right now. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. All right, so now let's go into the cons with Caleb Williams. All right, so we'll start with ball security. And the thing with Caleb is that you're going to hear this quite a bit during this process is that he fumbles the ball too much, which is absolutely true. And the reason for this is that when he likes to scramble and when he likes to rush, he likes to carry the ball with one hand. And that's definitely pretty dangerous when you're dealing with high level athletes that are trying to knock the football out of that hand. And if you're not securing it, you know, in the, in, in, in the tuck, or if you're got two hands on it, they can easily bat that out of your hand. So that's the thing that Caleb is definitely going to have to work on heading into the league. You can't be giving up those free turnovers like that. Uh, so although he's a special playmaker, all these different things, he's going to have to learn to not uh, be this dangerous with the football as he goes into the National Football League. And then the other thing that you're going to hear about Caleb Williams during this process is that he plays hero ball too much. He goes outside of structure too much. And this is true but it also points to other things, all right? The fact that he, was play pre that he would play hero ball points to the terrible offensive line. It points to the terrible, or maybe not terrible, but definitely subpar weapons that he was dealing with, all right? Now, that doesn't necessarily make, uh, take away everything, right? Because there were examples where Lincoln Riley just straight up uh, schemed people open for him. He was looking right at them, but he's like, eh, this is only going to be about a seven-yard completion, so I'm going to go outside the pocket and try to make a 25, 30-yard play down the field. And he knows he's talented enough to make that kind of play. So he's going to try to get the 30-yard play over the 7-yard play every time. But the thing with that is that sometimes you need those 7-yard chunks to stay on schedule. Sometimes you need to take kind of the quick hitters so that it opens stuff up. 
down the field. And that's the thing that he's going to have to learn when he comes into the league. I think that he absolutely has the ability to hang in the pocket and go through his progressions. There's a big difference between a guy that chooses not to go through his progressions and somebody that simply can't go through his progressions. All right, Caleb Williams is the former. All right, he's somebody that clearly has the mental processing ability to go full field progression reads right away in the National Football League. He's a great processor of information. He's great. He's highly intelligent, guys. But it's just, you know, at USC, he wanted to be the hero because he had pretty much no help, and he tried to do everything himself. So in the National Football League, hopefully Cliff Kingsbury or whoever's going to be his offensive play caller can really corral that in him and kind of get him to do what Andy Reid did with Patrick Mahomes, where Mahomes was a complete mess in college, all right, way worse of a prospect than Caleb Williams was, but because he was paired with the right offensive play caller that was able to corral some of those dangerous tendencies in his game, uh, is why he's arguably the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. And I do think Caleb Williams is that type of quarterback. Now, I'm very confident that Caleb Williams is going to be able to adjust to the pro game, all right? Especially if he goes to the right team with the right offensive coordinator and the right quarterback coach to help develop him. Uh, but honestly, guys, this guy is pretty darn developed already. He's already extremely intelligent when it comes to the game of football. He already plays with great pocket footwork. He's already, I think he's going to be one of the top 10 best playmakers outside of the pocket in the world by the time he steps into the National Football League. So I really do think he's, he's going to be primed to have a really special rookie season, and I just can't wait to watch him play in the National Football League. All right, so we've gone over the pros, the cons. Now I'm going to go over some of the things that people are saying are cons about Caleb Williams that I just straight up disagree with. All right, so let's start with the first non-issue, which is size, all right? People are saying he's too small. He's 6'1", all right? So that's like the same height as Jalen Hurts, Baker Mayfield, all right? A bunch of other pro quarterbacks that are starting in this league are around that height. 6'1", is not short, okay? It's just not. It's not like we're talking about Bryce Young or Kyler Murray here where they're like 5'9". That's not what we're dealing with here, okay? This guy is plenty big enough to play in the league. He threw over the middle of the field just fine at USC, it's not going to be a big problem. And he's also a bit thicker, man. 220 pounds, man. That's not that far off from where Justin Fields is. So I'm not really too concerned about Caleb Williams' size heading into the league. Sure, he's not 6'5", you know, but he's definitely not Kyler Murray. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. Number two non-issue is his leadership. All right, the people at USC and his teammates, especially his offensive line, worship this kid. All right, he, he, he paid for his entire offensive line, to fly out to New York for the Heisman Trophy ceremony, all right? He paid for all of them. He paid for their dinners. He paid for their hotel rooms, okay? This guy is an incredible leader. This guy is an, takes care of his guys. Everybody talks about his work ethic, how much they love him. Just listen to Lincoln Riley talk about this guy and try telling me this guy's not a good leader for your locker room. Good luck trying to tell me that, okay? Number three, if you're worried about painted fingernails, in the National Football League, or if you think he's a douchebag because he does this, you need to get over yourself, all right? You just do, all right? The film is the film. This guy's a special player. And by the way, he paints his fingernails for his charitable foundation that he founded in college to help people with bullying, okay? People dealing with bullying. And that's, some, that's a noble cause, all right? So it's not like he's just painting his nails because he, you know, maybe he does like it, but it's not just because, you know, he's a sissy, because he's doing it for a good cause. So I don't understand why people uh, hone in on this type of stuff instead of what they actually see on the film and on the field itself. All right, and then number four, uh, this, is, this one might annoy me the most, is that people think that he can't be an NFL quarterback because he cried after a loss. All right, and anybody that is saying this doesn't ha or has never been in like an actual like college or pro locker room after a big loss, or even high school, right? If you really care about winning, if you really care about your craft and, and delivering results for your fans that are counting on you, and you fall short, I mean, I've been in those locker rooms as a college baseball player when we fell short of our goals. Everybody was crying in those locker rooms, okay? The fact that Caleb Williams embraced and cried after a game is not a big issue, all right? When Dan Campbell cried in a press conference, everyone said, look at this guy, he loves his, his, he loves his guys, he loves his team, and he loves football. When Caleb Williams did it, people called him a sissy, uh, and, the, and I think people are just sick of hearing how great he is, and they're looking for any excuse to put him down a peg when this really isn't a big deal, guys. It's just not. 
All right, so my conclusion here is that Caleb Williams is the best overall quarterback prospect for the NFL draft I have ever evaluated in my time doing this, and that goes back to 2018. All right, so that's better than Burrow. That's better than Kyler Murray. That's better than Trevor Lawrence. This guy is a special, special prospect with incredible playmaking ability. Some of the best arm talent I have ever seen. And then he, he puts the polish on top of that. I mean, I just, I'm just not sure what else he could do to get a higher profile and a higher pedigree than what he has right now. So listen, the high-end comp here is Patrick Mahomes. Now listen, obviously Mahomes has gone on an incredible tear. He's, he, I think he's going to win his, his third Super Bowl on Sunday. He's, the he, he's arguably the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. Certainly the most talented in my opinion. Uh, so that's definitely a high bar, okay? But that is the high-end comp because Williams shares a similar type of arm talent, similar type of playmaking ability, all right? And if he continues to do the things that he's doing and he goes on this trajectory, I think that Patrick Mahomes and Caleb Williams could be the two best quarterbacks in the league uh, three, four years down the line. Then the low-end comp here, let's say he doesn't hit his high-end potential here, he's a bigger version of Kyler Murray. And Kyler Murray was an MVP candidate a couple of years ago, man. Like, this guy... Uh, he certainly has his limitations, but most of those limitations are based on height and, and size. Caleb Williams doesn't have those concerns. So I think that Caleb Williams has some of the highest floor, and he definitely has the highest ceiling of any quarterback in this year's NFL draft class, and I could not recommend him more for any franchise to potentially go get him if they have the shot. And that includes the Washington Commanders. And I absolutely do think he is worth the trade up here for the Washington Commanders. And even though you'd have to give up probably your first rounder next year and one of your second round picks this year in order to get a deal done with the Chicago Bears, I think he is 100% worth that price because this guy's special, all right? If you have the opportunity to get somebody that could be a Mahomesian type talent, one of the top three quarterbacks in the National Football League, a perennial MVP candidate in the National Football League, you freaking take that chance, all right? That is worth giving up your first round pick for one season and then a second round pick uh, in your current year. All right, that is absolutely worth it in my opinion. Now, that's not to say there aren't other quarterbacks in this, in this draft that would be worth taking if you're the commanders. If you don't want to give up two first rounders and a second round pick to move up one spot, I'm okay with that. I'm, go I'm good with some other options here, including North Carolina's Drake May, who's going to be the next in the series here of quarterback scouting evaluations here for the 2024 NFL draft. Next time here on the scouting report, I'm going to go over Drake May's pros, cons, non-issues. And of course, I'm going to be going into my pro comps for him as well. And we'll probably talk about whether or not uh, or how far the gap is here between Drake May and Caleb Williams as we approach the 2024 NFL draft. That'll be it for today's show, guys. Thank you so much for bearing with me here. I know this is a little bit of a longer video, but thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button for nonstop Commander's Draft coverage all throughout the 2024 offseason.